Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today, and perhaps over the next couple of days, we are going to be tackling some much needed plant chores. I feel like my plants have, I wouldn't say that they're fully being neglected, but I will say that they've taken a little bit of a backseat just as I've gone through a busy, this is just kind of a busy period, I guess, um, with stuff going on with the house and the yard, trying to get the garden going. Um, we've been, we were in Vancouver a couple weeks ago. We're going back to Vancouver this weekend. Um, we have company family coming to stay with us the week after we get back from that. It's just, there's a lot going on. Um, all good things. It's like, everything is great. Everything is grand, but the plants have definitely not taken a hit, maybe some of them, <laughs> but, um, yeah, they just, we need to, we need to dedicate some energy to them, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I've compiled a list of things that I really would like to get done just because I do have so much going on. I, I really wish I'm like craving just a full day that I can just have like a day spent entirely with my plants doing plant chores. I'm going to have to set aside a day for that, um, within like, I don't know, whenever I can within the next few weeks, maybe. But um, this week, I the best I can do is just setting aside a couple of hours a day. So I figured I would take you with me. We're gonna start off with a few chores today. And the first one that I have on my list is to do a spider mite treatment because yes, spider mites have joined the party over here. It's weird because I remember when I first got into plants, I would always really struggle with spider mites. Uh, they were like the bane of my existence and I had such a hard time getting rid of them. But ever since I've moved into this house, I haven't really, even at my last place, like I really don't think, in the past few years, it really hasn't been a big problem for me. I hadn't even really seen them in the longest time, but now suddenly they're just popping up all over my plants. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? They seem to really come in hot during the spring or the fall when the seasons are really transitioning. And yeah, unfortunately they're on some of my plants that I really love, like my Alocasia Jacqueline, which makes sense because she just hasn't been happy. And then I looked at her and she's literally covered in spider mites. So we need to give her a full, like, yeah, we really need to wash her off because there's like, it's a bad infestation, probably the worst infestation I've ever had with like the amount of webbing there is on her. And I noticed this a few days ago and I just haven't gotten around to it. So the poor thing has just been suffering. Um, sometimes that's just life. It's been in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh, I need to deal with that. I need to deal with that. But today we're gonna deal with it. So spider mite treatments. I have a few plants that I wanna treat. Um, and then I want to catch up on some of my moss pole watering. I think that most of most of my poles are pretty good, but I think that the actual like pots, like the plants need to be watered. So, and then I also want to check out my ones that are up on the wall. I just want to kind of make sure, make sure everything is all good with all of my moss pole plants because I just, I like to invest a lot of energy into those plants because you kind of have to, if you want to, if you want good results with climbing plants. So I just like to make sure that they're all good. And then um, I would like to pot up my philodendron silver sword because I really want to get that plant going again, but it's just been cuttings for the longest time. So I want to get those potted up with a pole and just cross my fingers that I'm gonna be able to get them to grow. For some reason, I have a tough time with that plant when it's in its like juvenile form. I really, yeah, I should have kept, I've had a mature one multiple times in the past and I've all I've, all I've kept is just small cuttings from it, which I kind of regret, um, but we're gonna try to really put some energy into that and get her growing again because yeah, philodendron silver sword is just, an incredible philodendron. I love it so much. So I really want a nice, big, healthy one in my collection again. I really miss that. So I'm gonna do that. And then the last thing that I have on my list today is to water my Hoyas that are up on my second window. Those get bone dry. As you can imagine, they get blasted with sun being up in that like high unobstructed south window. So we're gonna take them down, give them some water and some fertilizer. And then I think that that's gonna wrap up our chores for today. I do have a list of things I wanna do tomorrow. And then um, on a third day, if I get time. Um, but yeah, let's just get started with our spider mite treatment. <laughs> okay, yeah, if you wanna see a bad spider mite infestation, here it is. 
Look at that. I have not seen this on my plant like this in, in literally years. That is crazy. Look at them crawling around. Oh my gosh, yeah, she's literally infested. Oh my gosh. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is bring her into the shower and just spray her off so that I can like mechanically move, remove everything that I can, all of these bugs and webs and everything. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna let the Jacqueline just dry off a little bit in the tub before I spray her down with a treatment. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and treat another plant that I spotted spider mites. She's very, she's in the same kind of area as the alocasia Jacqueline. So I'm not super surprised, but this isn't a bad case. Like there's no webbing or anything. I could just see a couple of them crawling on here. So um i'm just gonna go ahead and spray her down i think i'm gonna use the bios herbal pesticide that's something i've been kind of trialing over the past couple of months and i've only used it for i think mealybug so far so i kind of just want to try that out for spider mites to see how it does so i'm gonna spray her down with that this is my weird twin leaf plant um these are <laughs> what the two leaves ended up looking like so it's two completely separate leaves and then they're joined at one petiole here they share a petiole and then the new growth is literally doing the exact same thing it is so crazy so there's double leaves and one petiole it's kind of hard to see because all the leaves are just like clustered in here now um i can see the next growth like just starting to emerge and i can't tell if it's going to be a double or not yet <laughs> so we'll see but yeah this is a very unique plant <laughs> i already have some pre-mixed in here but it comes in a concentrate form the bottle looks like that so i'm just gonna spray front and backs of the leaves and i am doing this closer to the evening because you're not supposed to do um a lot of pest treatments when the plant is going to be exposed to direct lights because the leaves can get burned so i don't think this plant is really going to get much more light for the day so it should be fine I like to make sure I get the stem as well, like the vine along the moss pole. This stuff is nice to use because it doesn't have a smell. I mean, not really, like, yeah, it doesn't have a bad smell. Okay. I think that's good. I'm gonna see if she needs a water while she's here. No, I don't think so. 
think she's actually pretty well watered so I'll just let her kind of dry off here for a little bit oh my gosh my filming skills are awful right now I feel like you could hardly see any of that <laughs> Anyways, we're just gonna let her dry off here for a little bit. Okay, I just have to show y'all quickly in case you don't follow me on Instagram. My Bulbophyllum orchid is in bloom and it's the most immaculate thing I've ever seen. So I just have to show you on here as well because I don't know how long they're gonna last. So I'm like, I need to show them as soon as I can on YouTube. Look at these flowers. Oh, they are so crazy. Do you see that? That is the craziest thing ever. I truly cannot believe that this has happened for me. I thought it was gonna take years to see blooms on this. Two of them, oh my gosh, it is so cool. So whimsical, so just like weird. Oh man, yeah, I have been obsessed with this plant. I just, oh, it is so, so cool. I really want to try out some more orchids. <laughs> like, I really, really do. This has just completely sold them for me. It's, like, beautiful and shimmery up close, too. It is stinky, though. Like, it doesn't really have a good smell. But, um, yeah, really, really cool. So I had to show you guys. I just checked some of the other plants in that area, and I can't really see any other spider mites, so... Hopefully <laughs> the outbreak is contained. I honestly think it was mostly just the alocasia jacqueline um, that was really attacked, which, yeah, I don't know. Kind of weird because she has such like a thick, like hairy, bristly leaf, but apparently they're into that. <laughs> um, so while we're waiting for her to dry off, I don't want to spray her when she's like soaking, soaking wet. I'm going to wait a little bit. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to collect my moss pole plants so that we can make sure that those are all watered and good to go. Here I am with my moss poles. I love them so much. It makes me so happy just to look at them and uh, admire them. So it's always fun kind of taking them out of their spots. But a lot of them actually don't even need to be watered, which is shocking. Um, whenever I go to water a plant and it doesn't need to be watered, I'm always like, what's going on here? <laughs> because I'm such an underwaterer. I feel like plant my plants are always thirsty. But um, a lot of these are actually good and the poles are, well, some of them could use some water, but for the most part, they're not bad. Um, but I do just kind of want to give them just, I just like to get a closer look at them. 
uh, you know, like once a week or so. And I haven't, I don't, I feel like I haven't really taken them out of their spots in a little while. So I'm just going to check them out, make sure everything's all good. See if any vines need to be pinned to the poles or anything. I have my philodendron serpents here and she's actually put out this new leaf, which is stunning. And I was having trouble with her new leaves just yellowing off, but this one actually looks fairly healthy um so i'm really happy about that the only thing is that she gets extra floral nectaries really badly so if you can see all of the like droplet things on the back of the leaf um it ends up creating damage that shows through to the front see so i'm just gonna rinse her under the sink to get rid of those i guess i'm gonna have to put that into my routine to make sure i'm rinsing her or watering her in the shower or something because um yeah i think that this philodendron can be bad for that so i'm just going to try to stay on top of it as best i can And also with my Rousseau poles, I like to just as they grow, just make sure that the next strap isn't going to be in their way. So you can see that this strap, I usually keep them open. Um, this strap is, is this not focusing? This strap right here needs to be moved out of the way because it's going to grow over it soon. So I'm just going to open it up carefully. You can just leave them closed, honestly. Like the roots will still um, grow into it. I'll show you an example of that in a second. But I like to, I like to have mine kind of tucked in there whenever as they grow. So I usually just like, um, see this one I just left open, but I could close that up now if I wanted to because the plant's grown past that spot. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna leave it, I guess, because she's just happy the way she is. But um, let me show you my glorious. The straps are closed here, but she's just she's just growing and rooting into like where the moss is exposed. I don't know if you can even see what I'm talking about, but let me show you this side. Maybe it'll be better. So she's just on top. Oh my gosh, the leaf keeps covering the camera screen. She's just on top of the straps and just rooting in wherever there's a gap. She's just rooting here wherever she can because I guess I didn't get a chance to open the strap in time because she grows so fast, but she doesn't even care. She's just gonna climb it anyways. Oh, and look at this juicy new leaf she's putting out too. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy because I felt like this plant was at a standstill for the longest time, but once it got going, it's just really gotten going. Like she's unstoppable now. <laughs> she's growing like crazy, which has just been so cool to see. And she doesn't even need anything, I don't think. She doesn't really need to be watered. She doesn't need uh, like her poles super moist. So she's just, she's good to go. Miss Splendid is really getting going here too, which has been so rewarding to see because, well, some of you might remember my large Splendid that I used to have, chopped it into wet sticks, and that's what this one is growing from. And it's just taking me back to like the process of watching this plant grow. It sizes up so unbelievably quickly, like it's, it's crazy. If you want an easy velvety philodendron, that sizes up quickly, this is the one for you. She is thirsty, so I'm just going to, I have some fertilizer water mixed up here, and I'm just going to water her. I'm also gonna water the pole. Because the pole was already somewhat moist, it takes the water really well. But if you go to water pole and it's bone dry, you have to do it super, super slowly because all the water is just gonna bead off and it's gonna go like all over the place, all over the floor if you're watering in place. If you can stay on top of keeping moss poles somewhat moist, it makes caring for them so much easier. So yeah, just it's all about consistency. Thank you. 
I'm going to do the exact same thing with my Philodendron Splendid here. She's also doing fairly well, but the pole needs to be watered and the pot also needs to be watered. This one is drier, so I need to water it a lot more slowly or else the water's just going to come off. Let's make room for the red anderson. Oh, she feels bone, bone dry. The pole is moist, which is good, but the pot really needs to be watered. I think I need to repot this plant soon. To be honest, I think she needs that. I'll just add a little bit into the pole. Okay, you guys, it is time for Miss Silver Sword to make her comeback. Starting today, we are going to be trying to grow a nice, beautiful philodendron hostatum. So, let's take a look at the roots. Okay. Do they look amazing? No. But do they look okay? Yes. Um, 
This philodendron is actually a little bit tricky to propagate. Like, I tend to lose a lot of cuttings. This is actually quite successful. Did they all survive or is this one? Yeah, this one, it's yellow, but technically it's rooted. So, and it has a growth point right there. So technically that one made it as well. I don't think I'm gonna use all of these though. I think I'm gonna pot two of them. I think I'm kind of changing my mind from, um, oh shoot, I just broke root off. Okay, let's get, let's get everything out of the way here. Um, I used to always pot, I mean, not used to, this is what I do. I pot three cuttings when they're climbing plants, but I'm kind of thinking that I want to decrease that to two because I just feel like I'm gonna have much better chances of growing out a plant to like get more mature leaves, the less cuttings that are in there. So I'm kind of changing my mind to um, putting two plants in rather than one or three, sorry. Just checking for any pests, it looks good. This thing has been living on the mealy shelf, but doesn't look like they've come for her. So that's good. I don't know if I wanna use this. Like this is obviously the biggest one, which I broke a small root off of, but that's okay. Um, this is obviously the biggest one, but the leaves don't look the best, but I probably should use this biggest one and maybe this one. It's so hard to decide. I think I'll do that. So, okay, they're pretty slimy. <laughs> Let me wash my hands here. I am gonna have them climbing on a Rousseau pole. So maybe I'll construct that quickly first. Were y'all around when I had my big silver sword? I My first silver sword was probably my favorite. It was just so pretty. It was like medium sized. It wasn't like super, super massive, but it was gorgeous. And then I got that huge silver sword from Home Depot. Do y'all remember? That was probably like two years ago and I kept it for a while and then I just could barely even get around my own freaking little apartment. Like I couldn't even open the Millsville cabinet cause it was just taking up so much space in my living room. So I had to, I ended up giving that away. Um, I think for free, I think someone came and picked it up. Yeah. So I'm sure that that made someone very happy, but um, I do miss having a big silver sword. All right, I'm just gonna do this super quickly. This is a reused Rousseau pole, obviously, as you can see, cause the, it's all like bent and stuff. I obviously, I always keep them and wash them. Like if I take a plant off of one, I always just reuse it because you can just keep using them, which is nice. Okay, a little bit more maybe. her together. Okay, oh, one more. All right. Oh shoot, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm already abusing them. Okay, okay. Let's just add some soil into here.
Okay. Boom. <laughs> Had to be swift with that one. Okay, so now I'm gonna stick these guys in here. Let's... That one can go there. Oops, gosh. That one can go there and then this one can go like that. I think. I just wanna make sure there's not a growth point. No, I think the growth point is facing out. So that should be pretty good. Let's just fill her up. It's actually really nice repotting here at the kitchen island rather than the table because it's just like a better height um, to work at. I always have to stand up from my chair when I'm repotting at the kitchen table. But this, I can like move all around wherever I need to go. I don't know why I don't do this more often. Okay, so I think that that is good. I think I'm going to pop some bios in here as well. Put a little bit here. And I'm also going to give her a spray. Just since I have this herbal pesticide spray here, I might as well just like, you know, prophylactically. All right. Here she is. Of course, she doesn't look like much yet, but hopefully she will soon. So let's water her in. And I'll start adding some liquid fertilizer maybe with the next watering. This is fresh soil. We have the bios in there. I don't know where I'm gonna put her. I need to figure that out because this plant did not thrive under the Barina lights, um, which is where I've had it for the past little while and it just does not seem happy under those. I feel like, hmm, maybe I'll just put it in front of the window. Well, I don't know. We're getting to that time of year where the window is starting to burn my plants that are right in it. So I've had to move a lot of my plants. Yeah, I've had to do rearranging because of that. It just gets, it's just too much <laughs> for some of them. So yeah, I'm gonna have to think about where I'm gonna put this plant. This is honestly the biggest problem in my plant collection lately <laughs> is space and trying to find a spot for everyone. Okay, so I just pulled my Hoya down from the top window because we need to water them. And y'all have not seen these plants in a while because they, I was um, treating them for thrips, which I haven't seen since I first saw them. So I think we're in the clear, but oh my goodness, you guys, they have been going crazy up there. Look at the Quinquinervia. It is massive. Like 
it's just constantly putting out new leaves it's so so crazy like just how full this pot is like there's like layers and layers and layers of leaves it's a bush it's a literal bush um yeah and it's actually getting some sun stressing on it which i have i was never able to get a quinquinervia to sun stress before um but obviously it's getting a lot of light in the south facing window not all of them are loving that the chicken farm which is right here does not seem to be loving all the light so i might take it down i just want to leave it up there a little bit longer just to see if maybe it will acclimate to that spot but um yeah we'll see um but the leaves are just coming in in not the best shape and i think that it's too much light because of the spots that it's getting um when hoyas have black spots like these it can mean like just like light burn light damage and it is getting that on some of its leaves so yeah wait does it have mealies does it have freaking Oh my god, it literally has mealies. I think, like, that looks like the eggs or something right there. Um, okay, so I guess I'm gonna be spraying this one down with the Pez treatment as well. What the heck? I still think that this, like, damage, like, this isn't from mealies. I've never seen Mealy's do something like that. But what are all the white things on it? Is this Mealy's? Okay, I need to set the camera down so I can look at this. Okay, maybe I take back everything that I said. I think that this damage might be from Mealy's because I zoomed in with my phone camera and from what I can tell, these are all baby Mealy's. What the heck? This plant did come from the Mealy shelf like a couple of months ago, so maybe these like hatched or something? I don't know. Oh, that's so unwell. Okay, well, obviously I'm going to spray this one down. Um... I mean, I guess that's good because maybe once I get rid of that problem, it will start to thrive more in that spot up there. Anyways, I'm going to wash my hands and then let's go back to looking at the ones that are happy. Okay, well, first of all, as you can see, Miss Linearis, she's so, so long. I haven't even trimmed her. I haven't trimmed her since I've moved in here, I don't think. So in the past year, I don't know. She's just, I just haven't done it. <laughs> um she's just growing i mean i'll have to do it once she hits the floor which honestly she's not that far from so perhaps um you'll see that in a video soon but yeah no she's gorgeous nothing really new or crazy with her i find that she doesn't really suffer from pests like even when the other plants around her get pests i don't really notice pests on her i've never seen a pest on her so knock on wood hopefully that keeps up um, anyways, as we saw with the Quinquinervia, she's looking stunning. She's getting huge. And then right here, we have this cutie, which I'm just obsessed with how this looks. Like, it's so beautifully climbing this um, trellis. Like, I feel like this Hoya was just made for this trellis. It looks so, so pretty. That's my Hoya Camphorifolia, which uh, I really want to bloom. So, I don't know if it will happen this year, but um i'm just trying to keep her really healthy and give her good growing conditions so that she will bloom for me one day oh and she's also holding hands with the quinquinervia they're attached <laughs> and then right here this beauty is my hoya kaimuki she has these stunning dark leaves when they first come in they're so dark look at that Oh my gosh, I'm just obsessed with the new growth on this plant. Now, this plant didn't really grow for me for years, and then I repotted it, started watering it more, and gave it more light. And well, actually, I didn't change the light, it was already getting a lot of light, but I repotted it and I started keeping up with the watering better. And she has just put out so much growth like, huge 
healthy lays. She looks stunning. I'm so, so happy with her. Um, she also has another, like, yeah, right here, this vine, um, or this, like, part of the vine is pushing out new leaves, too. So, yeah, really, really rewarding plant to grow. Oh, yeah, it is, it is a different vine. It is, and then they, like, intertwine here. I need to get her on a bigger trellis, um, because she's just on that small one and obviously she needs a bigger one. But yeah, they're doing so, so good. So I'm just gonna give them a quick water and we're gonna spray down the infested one. Okay, I'm gonna finish off my chores today by spraying down Miss Jacqueline and then I'll just let her dry in here again before I put her back in her spot. Now, um, like I said, I've never used this BIOS for um, spider mites, so kind of experimental. I'm sure it's gonna do something, but yeah, we'll see. The nice thing about this plant is that it's literally only two leaves, so she kept flowering for me, um, and I've just been like cutting them off because obviously I want a nice new leaf, not new flowers. And then I realized she was infested. And I was telling my boyfriend, I was like, oh my God, look, she's infested. And he was like, no wonder she keeps flowering. Like she thinks she's gonna croak. I was like, oh my God, I feel bad. Did I do the back of this one? I don't remember, I think I did. So um, I hope that I can get new leaves on her soon because I love her so much, but she's like the slowest growing alopecia ever. <laughs> or maybe it's just because, well, no, I've had her for a couple years now and I literally think she's just slow. But when she does give you a leaf, it's like the most immaculate thing you've ever seen. Okay, it is dinner time for me. It's 5.15, so I need to start cooking. That's gonna be it for today's plant chores though. I will see y'all back here tomorrow. Welcome to day two of getting some plant chores done. So I have three things on our list today. I did do some watering this morning, just like my quick version of watering where I go around with my little squeeze bottles and um, just water whoever. I basically did the living room kind of area. Um, although I'm just realizing I forgot to water my staghorn fern hanging in the window there. So I'm gonna have to take that down and water that one as well. But um, yeah, I just did a super quick job. I think I'm kind of gonna be in like quick watering mode for the next little while. Um, but today I want to focus on chopping a couple of my plants that just really 
are not looking great. The first one is my Begonia Irene Nuss. That begonia is so freaking beautiful, but for some reason mine is just giving me the ugliest growth. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it back and see if I can get some nice looking leaves on it. I really don't know what the problem is. And I've had this issue with a few begonias where they just, the leaves just come out looking funky and I don't know what the cause is. So yeah, I'm basically just playing around trying to get that begonia to be happy again. I'll talk about that more once we're once I have her in my hands to show y'all. Next on my list is to chop my variegated Maranta. I want to take some cuttings and just restart that plant because it is just not looking good. She's definitely been struggling and that's 100% due to my neglect. I let her get way too dry and um, yeah, she just, she got away from me. So we need to start her over. Luckily, Maranta are super easy to, you can chop them back and they'll grow back or you can take cuttings. They're super easy to root and to propagate. So I'm not too worried about her, but I do want to kind of get going on that. And then the last thing on my list is to pot up my philodendron Burl Marks Virigata cuttings. I've been rooting these cuttings for way too long now, like half a year at least. Um, and we're finally going to be potting them up. I'm going to give them a pole. I think I'm even going to do a wire pole, which is a little crazy. I haven't made any more wire poles since my first, like the three that I made in my DIY wire pole video. But I just think that it's going to, that plant is going to work the best on that pole because I don't necessarily want large leaves on that plant. I really just want it to be like full and bushy and beautiful. So I think that there's going to be more surface area if I do the wire pole. Um, for it to like root in and climb <clears throat> and fill out and everything. So that's my plan for that. And yeah, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So I guess we'll start with Miss Begonia Irene Nuss. Let me go grab her. Okay, so here she is. Now you can see why I want to get this plant growing nicely because the healthy leaves are incredibly gorgeous they're dark and shiny and honestly just giving dream begonia vibes like i am obsessed with how this looks but unfortunately i got a few of these nice beautiful dark leaves and then she started giving me growth that looks like this which are not dark they're this weird like light green red they just look very unwell um you can see that one up there they're small they look unwell like something is just going on here and i thought maybe it was a nutrient thing so i did add some slow release fertilizer in here a few weeks ago but i haven't i don't know maybe it'll take longer to see changes from that but i'm having trouble troubleshooting this one i can't quite figure out what is going to make her happy so i think i'm just gonna go ahead and cut um i guess here i'm gonna cut these ones off so i'll just be keeping the nice some of the nice dark leaves. She does have a ton of growth points that have activated. Um, and that's something about begonias. They will push out new growth points like at every node, I guess. They are very generous with um, putting out new leaves and shooting out like new branches and everything. So yeah, if you have any ideas as to why she's just not giving me these nice leaves, Leave it down below in the comments for all of us to see. In the meantime, I'm just gonna chop this back because I don't really know what else to do. All I know is that I don't like the look of these new leaves. So I am going to say goodbye to them. Oh, and I've also moved it. So it used to be in the bedroom, but I've moved it out to the living room um, just on the like dining table that's over here. So it's pulled back. It's not directly in the window, but it is gonna be getting more light. So maybe it wants more light. I don't know. Um, but yeah, okay, let's just go ahead and chop her. You know, I actually don't know if I would say she's getting more light now, but she's getting warmer temperatures. So maybe that's gonna help. I have heard that begonias are quite like, temperatures can really affect the way their foliage looks. So, but also she gave me these leaves or did she give those in the summer? I can't remember now. I don't remember. We'll see if the living room helps, but the bedroom is definitely way colder um, than the living room. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and chop. Mm, I'm gonna chop this off for sure. And then, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna chop both of these, but that one has that nice dark one there. Okay, I'm gonna start with chopping this. Like, it's just so not cute. 
it looks like chlorotic and unwell like i don't know if the lighting is really showing it just yeah it's not not good okay so now oh gosh she's so gorgeous with her healthy leaves so now she's chopped back down to just having her nice dark leaves and we'll see we'll see i will keep y'all updated with any changes um hopefully the new growth is going to be looking better okay are y'all ready to see my sad variegated maranta <laughs> okay she looks good like this but if you look at the lower part it looks very unwell um yeah she needs to be cleaned up she needs to be propagated i also think that part of the problem is that she should have been oh my gosh is she in bloom oh, cutie look at these little flowers oh can you see oh my gosh that's so precious i love when marantas bloom they have like the daintiest little flowers my silver band is blooming like crazy right now there's like a million blooms just shooting out of it um but yeah look at this look at this not good uh, anyways part of the problem is that she should have been repotted like i just was not on top of that and this dries out so quickly like it's just yeah it's too small of a pot for her um what i think i actually want to do with this plant is to pot it into a hanging basket and have it like hanging on the wall because I used to grow my Maranta like that and they look so pretty because these will trail down like I mean mine looks unwell but they will trail down a little bit and I think that they look so stunning and I really want her to be just on better display because I, I never really like I just don't notice her that much the where she's tucked in the bedroom so yeah I need to get her cleaned up um I don't know if I have a pot that i was actually gonna completely cut her up but now i'm like you know what the majority of her doesn't look bad so maybe i should just trim off the like unwell parts and then i don't know should i repot her or should i just give her a water hmm i'm not gonna repot her yet i don't think because I don't really know where I'm gonna hang her yet. Like I need to figure that out. But let's um let's clean her up. Okay, so I'm literally can you even see? Hard to fit her in here. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in and just literally chop off the vines that are not looking great. Cause she has so much other growth that um these crispy ones are just they're just gonna go i don't really want these like trailing ones right now she can grow like that later but if i'm gonna keep her in this pot i don't need those so we're just gonna remove them She must have had other blooms that I missed. I think that's what those are from. Okay. Wow, she looks so much better already. Okay, so any leaves that are really crispy, I'm gonna cut off. I just can't stand the crispy leaves. They could stay, it's just cosmetic, for cosmetic like aesthetic reasons that I'm gonna cut them off. Oh, that one has a new one coming out, so I'm gonna leave that one. But this one, bye bye Some crispy guys here. Okay, a lot of them are crispy. 
Oh well. It needs to be done. Okay, I need to stop myself. Oh my gosh, she's so little now. <laughs> she's so little now. But all of these leaves look healthy. All of these leaves look healthy and she'll fill out so fast. Like, trust me, she'll be full again within like a month or two. Marantas grow so, so fast. So I'm gonna bring her to the sink. I'm gonna spray her off just to remove any dust or anything and give her a thorough water. Okay, so here's her final look. Definitely took a ton off, but I'm happy that it's just healthy, beautiful leaves left and we can kind of start over from here. I might find a new spot to put her because like I said, I don't really love having her in the bedroom, but I just don't know where there's room. So I'm gonna have to put some thought into that. Um, yeah, in the meantime, I'm just really gonna try to keep her watered so we don't end up with those crispy leaves again. Okay, I'm gonna gather all of our supplies to make the moss pole for the Burl Marks um, variegated philodendron. Not looking forward to it. I did not enjoy making this moss pole the last time, but we're just, we're gonna get it done. Okay, luckily my piece is already cut out. This is just leftover from the last time I cut these out um, a couple months ago. If you wanna see that video where I talked about the pro, like went through the process of making these and shared yeah my experience of making them for the first time i'll link that video down below but i'm just gonna try to hello girl hello girl okay okay girl um i'm just gonna try to breeze through this one and i actually can't find my other wire cutters which are way easier to use to bend these pieces in so that is annoying, but I'm just going to try to use these ones. Okay, that is all done. So now I'm just gonna measure how deep this is gonna be sitting in our pot. I'm gonna be using a pretty big pot. This is an eight inch, just because we need to accommodate not only the pole, but a lot of cuttings. I don't know how many I'm gonna put in, but it's gonna be quite a few. So um, I'm gonna want this filled up to moss to about here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it. Okay, I think I'm gonna start zip tying this together. Now, when I first made these poles, I was really hung up on them not feeling or looking perfectly round. But honestly, I just don't think that these are ever gonna be perfectly round. Like, I think that that's just how they are. So I've kind of let that go. Obviously, I make them as round as I can, but it is hard to bend this wire.
Okay, we have our moss pole, so I'm gonna go grab the potting mix, clean some of this stuff up, and the cuttings, of course. Oh my goodness, they're actually stunning, so I'm really excited to finally be getting them potted up. Okay, I'll show you what the cuttings look like. So I have two vessels with propagations. This one um, is full of cuttings that I took from my plant that I originally had, which was reverting on me. This plant always reverts on me, which is why I like to do multiple cuttings. And also, and when I cut this up, I prioritized only the cuttings that looked like they were continuing with nice variegation. And I'm pretty happy with how they look. These have been getting cooked in the south facing window, so they're gonna be very happy to be moving away from there. They were just getting too much light, so you can see some of them um, are like burned. That's from the south facing window because it's just getting to be too much. And these cuttings were from the plant that was sent to me from this like, this actually wasn't even cuttings, this was a full plant. Um, I forgot about that. This is just like one big full plant. Anyways, I got this from Green Spaces, Green Spaces ID. Uh, they sent me an import in December and this has just been chilling since then. I didn't end up potting it up. I just left it in water and it's been super happy. These have been growing. This has barely been getting any light actually, but it still looks really good. It hasn't been growing a ton. It's been under barinas, but super far away, like on my bottom shelf over there. So they've just been staying alive, but not necessarily thriving. So I'm excited to get them potted up. This plant's stunning. Like it really is pretty. So I'll probably do this one and then a few, maybe like three. No, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I thought I was going to do like five or six, but I think I might just do three because this is a full plant with multiple vines. And I kind of forgot about that. And these branch out into like a million growth points that's something about this plant like it really yeah they grow kind of crazy okay so let's get her all potted up i've got my soil mix here we're just going to be using my diy mix and the pot that i picked so let's get the pole in there This is gonna be kind of tricky because this mix is not as chunky as my mollies. Oh my gosh, how is this even gonna work? How is this even gonna work? We're gonna have to try to make it work. <laughs> try to choose the like chunkier. Oh my gosh. have this one centered in the pot. My other ones, I have them kind of, oh gosh, do it fast. I have them kind of at the back of the pot, but I think this one, I'm gonna keep it centered. So let's fill it up a little bit. I'm gonna be vacuuming again after this, so I'm not too worried about the soil spilling. Okay, where's the back? Right here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the full plant. I'm so excited to be getting this potted up. It's been so long. Okay, I'm just gonna set him in there. Oh, this is gonna be pretty, you guys. Like once this gets bigger, I think it's gonna be stunning. Let me see how big the roots are on these. Oh, they're pretty big too. Oh my gosh, maybe I should have picked these before I put that in because now, is this gonna stay standing by itself? No, it's not, okay. Well, maybe it will, okay. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna use this lid. Oh, 
Oh boy. <laughs> they are very well rooted. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Let's try to have an idea of which ones I like. This, these, oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. They're so tangled. Oh man. Yeah, don't propagate like me, you guys. Don't just throw a million cuttings and then leave them for like six months. <laughs> it's just going to cause you grief. Okay, there's one. This one only has one leaf and then a dead leaf. Okay, probably not my top candidate. Oh, now I'm breaking roots. Oh, this one's pretty. That one's really pretty. No growth point or anything activated though, which is kind of like, why? It's been so long. Yeah, anything that doesn't have an active growth point, I'm probably not gonna use. Because it's just been so long, like I don't know why there wouldn't be a growth point already. I don't think I'm going to use this one. No. Oh my gosh. Good thing I did so many. This one doesn't look very nicely variegated. I don't think I'm gonna use that one either. I don't know about that one either. This is the burned one, but it does have multiple growth points. That one looks funky, but the variegation is really pretty. Hmm. This one looks like it's reverting. Man, I don't know, you guys. None of these are really calling to me. I actually kind of just want to keep it with this plant. <laughs> it kind of looks good just with this plant. I think I'm going to do that. I just, I don't know. Okay, I'll use this one even though it's burnt and kind of funky looking. I feel like it has a really good root system. The variegation looks like it's going to continue to be quite nice. So let's pop that one in. There's already so many roots in this pot now. Like, I feel like I only need those two. I think I'm only gonna do these two. <clears throat> There's so many growth points activated, even though this is only two plants, that I think it's still gonna end up looking really full. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at that. And now I'm gonna fill this up. This is why it's important to really think about what your goal is with how you want a plant to look when you pot it up. And like when you consider if it's a climbing plant, what type of pole do you want? Do you even want a pole? Maybe you do just want to do like a bamboo stake. Um, how many cuttings do you want to put in? Like there's so many different factors to con consider. So it really does pay to kind of take your time and thinking about it and planning it. All right, she is all potted up. So here it is. Of course, it looks crazy right now, but I cannot wait to give you an update on this one. I'm not able to attach it to the pole right now because the vines aren't long enough, but once it starts growing, it's gonna be so fun to watch it climb. Oh, feels so good to have that done. Okay, that's it for my plant chores today. I think I'm gonna do one more 
I'll pop in on one more day and we'll get a couple of things done. Um, I need to start editing this video to see how long it is. I also have just a really hectic next few days. I'm out of town for my mom's birthday and then I come back and then I'm going out of town somewhere else um, for a couple of days and then I come back. So after that is probably when you'll see me next. But yeah, we'll see depending on how long this video is and depending on my schedule, if I can add in some more footage. So the video might end here. If it doesn't end here, then you'll see me right now. Okay, hello guys, I am back. I thought I would just pop on and just, I don't know, we could chat a little bit and I need to mix up some fertilizer water. I was also gonna show y'all, actually, let me go grab it right now so I don't forget. So it's been three days, two or three days since I've last been on here and I've already had to water this Maranta twice. It is so thirsty. I honestly, I'm gonna have to repot this thing. Um, but I just wanted to show you, like it's already growing. There's new leaves coming out, multiple new leaves everywhere. Um, so I'm sure that this plant is gonna fill out super, super quickly. It just looks so pretty. I love it so much. I've moved it out to the living room. There's literally new leaves everywhere. It's so crazy how fast Marantas grow. Like it blows my mind. They get bushy and huge so quickly. But um, yeah, I've moved this out to my living room, or no, sorry, not my living room, my dining room, kind of beside the Millsbo Tall cabinet. But yeah, it's just doing so well, and that made me so happy to see. So I thought I would give just a little mini update on that one. Anyways, I'm catching up with my watering today, and I thought I would just pop on because I am going to be mixing up some of my fertilizer water, and I'm also going to be implementing my mosquito dunk routine because it, like i said it's spring the mosquito did i say this i can't even keep track of what i've said in which video but the fungus gnats are out <laughs> which i'm sure they are for a lot of other people i didn't have any fungus gnats in the summer because last summer because my plants were just drying out oh my gosh it was so hot in here my plants would just dry out like that so i just think that they were uninhabitable for fungus gnats so i did not have any um, winter, I didn't have any either, but then when spring, like as soon as spring started approaching, the fungus gnats just, they came in hot. So I need to do something about them now because uh, although they don't really damage, like they don't cause problems to your plants unless you have a really bad infestation or something, um, they're mostly just a nuisance and nobody really likes little tiny gnats flying around their face, right? So I'm gonna be going in with mosquito dunks. I've used these only for one season, so I'm not an expert on using these as a treatment for them or even fungus gnats at all. It's not really something that I've spent a lot of time or energy on because when it comes to pests, like they truly are just not on my priority list. So I used to really not even do much about them, but um, I started using these last year. Actually, I started using them because when I was moving out of my last, like the rental that I lived in before I moved here, um, my landlords were coming through there and like showing the place and stuff. And I was just like, oh my God, I don't want my landlords to see like fungus gnats flying around here. So I was like, I need to do something about this. Um, so I had heard that people use mosquito dunks and I figured not even just mosquito dunks, you can also get these in mosquito bit form, which is like a smaller, like the granules almost. Um, I know some people also like break these up. You can like grind them and stuff. I think the dunks are what we can get in Canada. Maybe you can get the bits somewhere now. I don't know. This is what was available to me. That's why I have the dunks. Um, but anyways, I'd heard a lot of people have success with this for treating fungus gnats. So I was like, I'll give it a go. It's a fairly like passive process uh, because all you have to do is just soak these in your watering can or your watering, in my case, jug. Um, so what I do is I break these into pieces, usually quarters. So I'll get like four little chunks out of one of these. This is like one chunk that I would use. And I put them in a tea bag here like this, stick that chunk in, close this up, pop it in your watering can or your watering bottle or bucket or whatever you're using and let that soak in there. They're supposed to soak for around 24 hours, I think, for them to really be effective. So I try to just like constantly keep a batch of water on hand. So once you kind of get in the rhythm of just like watering and then you refill it so that it's ready for the next day. And I have my two four liter bottles, which 
is usually more than enough to water all my plants, like two of those a day. So I wanna get that all set up and you can use the same piece for I think around a month they're effective and then I just switch them out. You can pull the tea bag out. I, I am gonna try to tie these better this year because last year these would open up and then the bits would like come out and float around and it was kind of gross. So I'm gonna try to like tighten and tie this off better this year. But um, yeah, that is my plan for fungus gnat control right now. I found that it worked really well last spring. It did take a couple of weeks for it to really be effective, but once I saw the results, like it really just was apparent that it was working. So we're gonna get that going. I'm also going to be adding my Vitamax Pro fertilizer because I've just been trying to use this up. And I've been getting a lot of questions of people asking what I use for fertilizer or like what my fertilizer routine is. And the reason I haven't really spoken about it or like, yeah, I just, I don't really talk about fertilizer because for one, I don't know anything about fertilizer. Like it truly is not something I'm educated on. I don't know like the, the sciencey side of that. I just kind of use whatever's available to me and whatever works. Um, and I was actually going to buy a new fertilizer. I really wanted to try the Dyna Grow. It's now owned by Super Thrive, the Foliage Pro. Yeah, um, I wanted to buy that one, but I don't know what the heck is going on with that brand right now, but it was pretty much impossible to find, like sold out everywhere in the places that did have it in stock. It was absurdly expensive. So for me to get a bottle that was, I think it was maybe this size, how big is this? one liter maybe it was this size for me to get a bottle like this of that fertilizer it would have cost 140 dollars and i was just like no i can't do that i'm not doing it so i'm just gonna use up whatever i have on hand and i was just thinking about how insanely expensive that is and how when i used to not know anything about plants i used to just use miracle grow fertilizer just like i had no idea what i was doing it was just a like hand-me-down fertilizer that my mom gave me and that's some of the biggest leaves I've ever had on a plant before. And I have just random cheap fertilizers sitting around. Like I have the fertilizer that I use for my Hoya mist. It's just like a 20-20-20. You can use that for house plants. So I'm like, I, I have this, like I should just try using it. It's super cheap and like maybe it will be effective. I don't know. Um, also Schultz, I use this for my cactus and succulents and it works great. Again, super, super cheap. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know, I'm kind of wanting to experiment with more just like budget options. I am really curious still to try out the Dynagro or the Super Thrive, whatever the freaking brand is now. Um, and I also would love to try out the growth technology, Foliage Focus, but again, that's really expensive, especially here in Canada. So I haven't tried that out yet, but I would really love to try. And would I be willing to spend the money if I did notice a really big difference in my plants? Yeah, I probably would be. Um, but for now, we're on a budget and I'm just using up whatever I have on hand. So like I said, I'm gonna be adding some of this into the mix. Um, I've also been adding a few drops of Super Thrive, like the actual just like Super Thrive supplement thing. So that's kind of just what I'm using up for liquid fertilizer right now, um, which honestly I think it works fine. Like my plants seem to be happy, <laughs> but I am also using some slow release stuff as well. I'm just doing I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just doing a combo approach, I guess. Um, but y'all know that I have my big bucket of Osmoco and I used to not really dip into that very often, but now I use it on a lot of my plants because it's just so easy. Like you don't really have to worry about it. You can just water with, you don't have to worry about having your fertilizer water mixed up or whatever. I do use both. Like even my plants that have Osmoco, I will also water with liquid fertilizer. Not every time, but, um, yeah, I see the Osmoco as just kind of like a backup thing or like a little boost for the plants, especially ones that are really hungry, um, like my anthuriums and begonias, even Hoyas, honestly, some of my larger philodendrons. I think that my Monstera Escoleto needs an increase in fertilizer because it's been looking a little bit chlorotic. That's a whole other story. Um, so yeah, I have been kind of implementing the Osmocote more as well as the liquid fertilizer. And then I've also been using, this is sounding excessive now, but I'm just kind of, keep in mind, a lot of these are just things I've had kicking around that I am like, well, I should use this up before I go and purchase something new. Um, but I've also been using, and I don't use this on every plant, I just use this on my plants that 
I feel like need an extra boost or plants that I just really want to get like the best care. So for example, my Monstera Thai Constellation, my Monstera Escaletto, like larger plants that I feel like ha just have like larger needs, I guess, and need more, not more support because when plants are large, they're quite hardy, but I just feel like to support such a large plant, they, they just need everything that I can give them. So I do use the BIOS for some of my plants. So this is just an all natural fertilizer that it's like a slow release, I guess. You just sprinkle it on or you can mix it into the soil um, and you'll see it create a fuzz. So that's it encouraging healthy, healthy microbes, like healthy fungus and bacteria and stuff. So um, I do like to use this for some of my plants, but not all of them. And you need to reapply this about once a month. The Osmo coat I do about every one, every three to four months. But I'm probably not super accurate with it because I don't, it's sometimes hard to keep track of when I've added that to plants. Anyways, that's my little fertilizer plant feeding chat. Um, probably not helpful because I'm just using what I have, but maybe the overall message of this is to use up what we have and not just be focused on trying to buy something new when we have like all these random things kind of sitting around. It's also good for me to focus on using things up because it decreases clutter. So that's definitely what something I need. Anyways, I'm gonna grab my four liter jugs and then we're gonna get, get this all mixed up and add the mosquito dunks and everything. Okay, here are my watering jugs and these are actually new. I really need to replace my old ones. My old ones were getting like all moldy and gross. So it feels good to have fresh ones that aren't broken. <laughs> I've already lost the lid for one of them, but that's okay. I'll probably lose the lid for this one as well. So let's do the mosquito dunk first. So like I said, I'm just gonna use the chunk. This piece, that'll be for one of these jugs. And we're just gonna pop it in our tea bag. Get in there. There we go. Tighten it. And then I'm gonna tie it off. I don't think I tied it last year. I think I just left it and then they all just floated out. Boop. Maybe I'll double knot it. Okay. So that's it. Like this is so easy, you guys, which is why this is the like fungus knot method that I was interested in. So we're just gonna pop that in. And then I need to break off another piece for our other jug. Okay, so that's what a whole one looks like. I'm just gonna try to break, maybe I'll try to break it in half. There we go. And then I'll break a half in half. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna be doing watering tonight, so this won't be soaking for as long as it should have, but by tomorrow it should be effective. So we're just gonna do the same thing. All right, pop that in, boom. And then, yeah, let's fill this with some water. Just get those to start soaking. Then I'm gonna add my fertilizer. Okay, so like I said, trying to use this stuff up, so we're gonna add this in. And I just use a dedicated dropper that I have for this guy. And it's getting kind of difficult to get it out because it's almost used up. Well, not really almost, but it's getting low. So I just add a couple droppers.
Okay, and then I have been liking to add just a little bit of Super Thrive to this as well. I mostly just use this for propagations, but um, yeah, I've just been... I've just been having fun adding it to my fertilizer mix lately and I'm just just curious if it's going to do anything. It is hard to measure like planty things like how how do you even tell if something is doing something? I mean unless you're only making one change at a time and you're mindful of it and monitoring plants and everything but I'm not a very specific person when it comes to keeping track of things as many of you know. Um, so I've just... I don't know, I just kind of roll with it and see and do whatever I feel like doing. I don't even know what I'm saying, sorry. <laughs> okay, so now these are ready to go and it's fertilizer, water, and fungus gnat control all in one, which is very nice. So I'm just gonna set these off to the side for now and this is a nice thing about trying to keep my fertilizer water always on the go like this, which I will be doing my best to keep up with because of the mosquito dunks. But the nice thing about that is that it's, I'm much more likely to just grab and water my plants if I see one that needs water. So it's just convenient to have them ready to go. Anyways, I think that that is all that I have for you for this video. I hope that you enjoyed just coming along with me. I find that I really like filming these videos and putting them together where I'm just kind of popping in every day over like a few days or a week or whatever and just letting you know what I'm doing with my plants that day. So I hope that you enjoyed as well. Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.